Genesis chapter 28 begins with a continuation, really, of the drama of the previous chapter. Isaac aligns himself with Rebekah's plan to send Jacob away to find a wife in their homeland. And he confers upon Jacob the blessing of Abraham as he goes. There is surprisingly no mention of anger at the deception that has just taken place. For his part, Esau reaffirms his wicked intentions by purposely going to his uncle Ishmael's family and taking a Canaanite wife for himself. It's almost as if he's trying to do whatever he can to spite his parents. But the memorable portion of this chapter deals with Jacob's dream. A few days into his journey, Jacob comes to the city of Luz. There, he camps out for the night, and as he sleeps, he sees a a vision of a ladder set up upon the earth, a ladder that reaches actually up into heaven. Heavenly angels were coming down and going up it, and the Lord is standing at the top. The message that the Lord spoke to Jacob was one of blessing and promise. It's a sort of affirmation uh, that the Abrahamic blessing had indeed been passed on to him. Now, this seems to be Jacob's first real interaction with God. Certainly, he had grown up hearing about God, uh, grown up witnessing or seeing the, the sort of ups and downs of his parents' rather reckless faith. But it seems like this is the moment that crystallizes his understanding of God and, and likely is the beginning of a truer, truer relationship with him. Jacob's response is noteworthy, for he says, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. This exclamation is followed by a vow in which Jacob states that since he now sees and knows who God is and what God is like, he has determined to follow and worship him. Herein lies, I think, the profound truth and even the intersection for all of us within this story. In Genesis chapter 11, it is the descendants of Nimrod who seek to build a tower to gain heaven. Their attempt fails, and likewise, every attempt by man to climb up to God through effort and good works will fail. But here, notice that it is God who comes down to Jacob, who shows himself to be the God who seeks and finds, shows himself to be the God of glory and goodness. Jacob's not looking for God. In fact, he seems surprised that God was even in that place. We are thus reminded that we cannot earn our salvation. And in fact, were it not for God's pursuit of us, we would never seek him. Jesus is the author of our faith, and any movement towards him is the result of him drawing us. Additionally, Jesus fulfills this reality in John chapter, 50, in John chapter 1, verse 51, when he says to Nathanael, Truly I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Don't miss the picture there. Jesus is linking himself with one of the greatest salvation stories in the Old Testament, while at the same time offering something even better. What Jacob saw in a dream... Nathaniel and the rest of the disciples would see in the flesh. And we, as we look back through the word of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we, we have something even better, a better perspective. For we know all that Jesus would do and accomplish. So I'll just leave you with this thought. The Bible tells us that Jesus came to seek and to save. And as he comes to you, when he calls you, when he allows you to see his beauty and his glory like he did for Jacob, what is your response? Will you ignore him or will you, like Jacob, fall to your knees in reverential fear and awe? May we all respond with faith.